If you own real estate in Montgomery County, this December Market Insight is for you. It's me, Melvin Yates, your neighborhood real estate broker with Exit Flagship Realty. On this month's Montgomery County Real Estate Market Insight, we'll focus on empowering you with the real estate facts and data, no fluff. I'm gonna share the five things you need to know as we enter 2022, plus I'll give you the national data and explain how it's affecting us on a local level. Now don't forget that my office has over 160 awesome realtors serving clients like you in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And we would love to help you put a real estate game plan together. Now for the numbers. This month, the average sales price in Montgomery County is $634,080. This is a 6.9% increase over the last 12 months and a 3.3% increase over the last 30 days. So for example, if you purchased a home for $500,000 a year ago, on average, that home is worth $535,000 today on average. Now, the average days on market, which is the time it takes to find a buyer for a home sold in Montgomery County during November was 21 days. And in the last month, we had 986 new homes come to market, which is the number of homes that were listed for sale. Now, this is an issue because we only have about three weeks of total inventory in the county, which means that we just can't keep up with the demand. Now, though this is concerning for my buyers, this is a huge opportunity for my sellers who should strongly consider taking advantage. And as far as home sellers who accepted an offer during the month, otherwise known as pending, there were 1,183 of them in November. And that represents 120% of the 986 new listings. Now, there were 1,235 homes that sold in the month of November in all of Montgomery County, and that's down 3.7% over last month, but up 3.1% over last year this time. So as the data shows, this is textbook supply and demand problem. My agents have lots of qualified buyers who wanna buy in Montgomery County, and they're willing to pay top dollar. I just need more homes for them to buy. So if you're thinking about moving up, moving down, or maybe moving away, your time could be now. Now, before I jump into the national data and explain how it affects us locally, feel free to text me an address, any address, and I'll shoot over a free market analysis on that specific home. Or you can schedule a confidential strategy session with me or my team using the link. Of course, you can call or email me anytime. I also want to thank the hundreds of thousands who watch my market insights and other informative videos and the tens of thousands of families who have been able to benefit in some way from the information and the thousands of clients we've served over the years. I will continue to work at being the most educated advisor on real estate topics in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So when do most listings come on the market? In a normal market, it would be the second quarter of each year, the spring real estate market, typically April, May, and June of every year. But the reality is that the market right now is anything but normal. The pandemic and coming out of the last couple of years is that the seasonality of traditional real estate has kind of been thrown out the window. So we'll start here. Home sellers have historically moved when something in their lives changed, a new baby, a marriage, a divorce, or a new job. Now this comes from Jessica Lautz, the Vice President of Demographics at NAR, National Association of Realtors. She goes on to say, the pandemic has impacted everyone. And for many, this became an impetus to sell and make a housing trade. The pandemic caused a lot of people to say, we need something different in a home. Now it goes on to say the pandemic likely spurred occupants to shorten their homestay as tenure in the home decreased from 10 years to eight years. Now, according to the report, now this is important here. This is the largest single year change of home tenure since NAR has been collecting the data. The historical data showed that families used to move about every six years, but after the housing crisis in 2008, tenure in homes began to rise. What we're seeing in this new report is that, you know, we're starting to see the tenure come down. Very interesting as we look at it, you know, and here's what it looks like geographically uh, going all the way back to 1985. You'll see the average of about six years of some staying in their home, you know, most people staying, you know, going, some people staying longer, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. The average just over nine years now in a home over the last 10 years or so. Now, there are a lot of good reasons for that. A lot of people maybe didn't have the equity to make a move. Maybe they were underwater for a while in the home that they own. Maybe they just said, you know, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to try to pay the house off. 
Now, coming out of a pandemic, we're seeing that dip down. Now, I'm certainly not saying that one year would make a trend by any stretch of the imagination, but I think we can safely say that it represents pent up seller demand in all those years that folks have stayed in their homes. We can say the meaning of a home has dramatically changed. We can also say there's more equity home in homes now than there has ever been before in history. All of this leading to many people thinking, maybe now's the time to make a move. And I do believe we'll start to see that in the winter. Now, let's take a look at what George Ratu at Realtor.com says. He said, the pandemic has delayed plans for many Americans and homeowners looking to move into the next stage of life. And that's no exception. Recent survey data suggests the majority of prospective sellers are actively preparing to enter the market this winter. So going back, a lot of reasons we just talked about, folks thinking about moving, this study is saying we're seeing a lot of those people preparing to enter the market this winter. In that same study, 65% said that they either just listed or planned to this winter. 93% said they've already taken the steps toward listing a home, including working with an agent. 36% have researched the value of their home and others in the neighborhood. And as well as we've started making repairs and doing what they need to do to sell the home. I think today in this market, being prepared, being educated and taking action, if appropriate, is what I want for you. Now, Danielle Hale says that this new listings have risen now for the second week in a row with this recent survey data suggesting that a growing share of homeowners and potential sellers are eager to find new homes. Now there's reason to believe this may be the start of a welcome trend, especially as we move into cooler months. You know, as we look into the winter, the data shows that we're gonna see more activity among sellers and among buyers than we've seen in quite some time as seasonality has been thrown out of the window. Now let's just talk for a minute about interest rates. Probably one of the biggest things that's going to be talked about as we go into the new year. What's going on with the interest rates? The overall outlook is interest rates are going to rise. And this is a look right now at the 30 year fixed. We've used this, you know, many times over the last couple of years, as we go back and look at January of 2020 prior to the pandemic, which is basically rates are knocking on the door 4%. Right now, the average 30 year fix is right at 3.1%. Many calling for that rise to go into next year. Now I'll show you what forecasters are saying, but if you were to ask me what's going to happen with interest rates, I think we're going to go back to where we were. You know, this is a historical perspective on rates. Now, you know, looking back at 2016, 17, 18, 19, you know, around four, you know, four normal years, I guess, quote unquote, normal years in real estate, you know, and we bounce somewhere between three and a half and 5%. Now I think we're headed back there. I think we're headed back into a much more normal interest rate environment. Now we've seen some phenomenal, awesome rates over the last year or so, historically low rates on a 30 year fix. And I think we're just gonna head back to a time where we were prior to the pandemic. The bottom line here is context matters right now for the housing market and certainly for purchasing demand. The economy is improving. Millennials are continuing to age into their prime home buying years in large numbers. So the context remains good for the housing market. And I think overall, as we look at that, we can expect a, a, a rising interest rate environment going into next year. Now, I don't see that affecting the housing market dramatically, but it will cost more to buy a home in the coming months and years. Now, before we close, I'll quickly share some mortgage rate projections. You know, this is an outlook from the four leading uh, providers that we follow, Fannie Mae, uh, Freddie Mac, MBA, which is Mortgage Brokers Association, NAR, as I mentioned earlier, National Association of Realtors, and what they're saying. Sometime between the middle and the end of next year, forecasting between three and a half and 4% in the average 30 year fix. So it is definitely going to cost more, I think. Now you should expect interest rates to rise. And I don't have a crystal ball to say exactly what the interest rates are gonna be. But as you can see, and I think we should all expect rising interest rate environment, and I'll continue to educate you as we go into the new year. Now, this next graphic is a home price forecast for 2022. Now, a lot of people are saying what's going on, what's going to happen next year to housing. I'm concerned, you know, I'm concerned that, you know, you know, here we go again, you know, all of that. Forecasters are calling for a 5.1% on average on housing appreciation. You know, and you see anywhere from seven and a half to almost 3% appreciation on the low side. Now, this is a direct nod to seeing how more inventory will come into the market. You know, the price will always be dictated by supply and demand in any market. Now, you know, the other question that starts to come up and is on people's minds, 
You know, at times, is the housing market going to crash? I'm concerned about what I've seen and forbearance and all the things that we know of have happened in, 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 in the real estate market. But the bottom line here is that housing sales are forecasted to increase this year and perform very well again in 2022. I want to remind you that last year in 2020, we sold six and a half million homes in this country. And we're forecasted to sell more than that this year and even more than that next year. You know, which basically leading for the past two years, phenomenal years in the real estate market and a very, very good next year as well. Now, the slide shows you just where we are in the real estate market based on monthly inventory in the extreme sellers market that we're in. Thinking about selling your home, there's literally never been a better time. And I know I sound like a broken record, but this graphic just underscores it and underscores it going all the way back to 1999. You know, what does the market look like? And it's been a great seller's market for those who have decided to sell. Now, you know, the last question that I'll kind of address on these slides is that if you're a buyer saying, you know, I don't know if I want to buy at the top of the market, you know, when you look at price appreciation and certainly not at the top of the market, but I know that it may feel that way for my sellers out there. If you're saying, if we sell, we're going to have to pay more for another home. That's why I've laid out the appreciation forecast. So you can see for yourself, pay attention to the data. Now, you know, the best time to buy a home is this year and the best time to buy a home, the next best time rather is right now, you know, and this was a survey done by the home price expectation survey, you know, based on this year, all the way to through forward to 2026, buying a home, average price home, you know, what appreciation, what, what appreciation is at stake by buying now versus not buying now $111,000, just over $111,000 in real appreciation over the next five years. So as a buyer, helping you see what's at stake is part of my job. Now, I know you guys are seeing things in the news and hearing things from friends and family. Please know that I will continue to be your rock for all things real estate, giving you the facts and data, no fluff. So if you're thinking about moving up, moving down, or maybe moving away, your time could be now. Feel free to text me an address and I'll shoot over a free market analysis on that specific home or you could schedule a confidential strategy session with me or my team using the link. Of course, you can call or email me anytime. Thanks.